Call the meeting to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please, Mary Beth. Nelson. Here. Orison. Something new on here. Larson? Here. Wunchell? Here. Hansen? Here. Reet? Here. Bulk? Here. Okay, item three, uh, Clay County Sheriff Chris Raveling. Uh, we'd like to call you to the mic, and he has a special presentation he would like to make. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and, uh, and Spencer City Council. I'd like to uh, present a letter of appreciation to four of our dispatchers and uh, job that they did for us during the, the I call it the blizzard of uh, Christmas here so what I'd like to do is I have a, a letter that I'd like to read and then present each one with uh, a letter of appreciation if that's okay yes okay it says I am writing this letter of appreciation to, to Melanie Peterson Andrea Ring Bree Rasmussen and Bonnie Norgard who are the 911 dispatchers for the Clay County Communications Center on December 23rd and 24th of 2022, during blizzard conditions, they were working in our communications center. And during the times from 12 a.m. to 12 p.m., they took over 120 calls for service here in Clay County in the city of Spencer. 76 of those calls were because of the snow event. The communication center dispatched first responders to seven separate accidents two of which were jackknife semis blocking U.S. Highway, and they also dispatched Peterson crew and fire to a residence in the county where a female subject had passed away. These dispatchers maintained their composure while dealing with multiple irate callers complaining of road conditions and response times for first responders. They remained level-headed and determined the call's priority so that the direst situations were attended to first. Simultaneously, they dispatched the correct emergency services and sent them to the emergency site with full details that would prevent any further danger. Their actions this day is an example of their training, compassion, and composure that exemplifies the core value of excellence in all we do attitude of the communications center. Thank you for all you do to keep our first responders safe in our county every day. Signed by me, Sheriff Chris Raveling. So I would like to present Melanie Peterson first. <laughs> Andrea Reen. <laughs> Bree Rasmussen. Thank you, City Council. I appreciate it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Sheriff Raveling, and uh, thanks to you for honoring uh, these dispatchers. They do a terrific job day in, day out, uh, 365 days out of the year. No I question look, about it, and we rely on them totally, and I'm glad that you recognize them. Yeah, we had over 15,000 calls for service last year in Clay County and Spencer, and so yeah. you realize they... That all goes through our communications center, and so it is uh, paramount that we keep these dispatchers in the, um, in the jobs that they do at the top of our mind and forefront as we appreciate everything that yeah. they do. They, so. It's a tough job, and uh, we are give them our thanks and gratitude for the job that they do. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you.
Okay, with that, we'll progress. Uh, item four is the consent agenda. Uh, item A is a motion to approve City Council minutes of January 16, 2023. B is a motion to approve uh, renewal of licenses, Class E retail alcohol license for brew oil, number 31, subject to final approval by Iowa ABD. C is a motion to approve residential tax abatement application for Nathan and Katie Gwynn, 2107 20th Avenue West, and Brad Namie Smith, 423 4th Avenue Southwest. D is a motion to approve purchase of laser, Laserfish HR infrastructure module in the amount of $7,405. This is a CIP item. E is a resolution to provide for a notice of hearing on proposed plans and specifications, form of contract, and estimate of cost for Northwide Gateway First Edition project, project, and the taking of bids, therefore, the letting date, hearing, and potential award of the contract, the date to be determined. F is a resolution authorizing permanent transfer of funds of budgeted transfers for the month ending January 31, 2022. Should that be... 23, 23. Uh, I think we already approved the 22. Okay. Uh, G is a motion to approve water management plan for the aquatic center for Carico Aquatics of Old Line, Iowa for $16,000. And H is a resolution to provide for a notice of hearing on proposed plans and specifications, form of contract, estimate of cost for Fifth Avenue East and West 11th Street sidewalk project, letting date, March 2, 2023, hearing a potential award of contract on March 6, 2023. Entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Motion made by Lauren. Second. Second by Tracy. Any discussion? Uh, Mayor. Um, Go ahead. I believe the, for that Northwide, the letting date is going to be uh, March 9th and the hearing date is March 6th. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So we got those determined this afternoon. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? Please vote by machine. Nelson, I, Orison, I, Larson, I, Wunchell, I, Hanson, I, Reet, I, Bulk, I. Okay, consent agenda passes. Uh, item five, there are no public hearings. Item six, under old business, A, is a motion to approve the proposal from the retail coach for retail recruitment in the amount of $20,000 plus up to an additional $5,000 in expenses. Motion made by Tom. Second. Second by Donovan. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, I think it should be noted that the utilities intend to pay 50% of this. Yeah, good point. Uh, that, uh, Councilman Orison uh, uh, does make a good point here that uh, SMU is going in half with the city uh, on this contract. And, and uh, thanks, Bill, for that. Um, Dan, question, when this comes up for renewal, will you get to us like a month before so we can discuss it and make sure that, that they're meeting their things instead of the day that we have to renew it on the, the meeting so we, we have a little bit of time to discuss what, how, how this has been working and how the process. I think by what I hear, you know, from other people around, it sounds like it's a good company, but I don't want to be at last minute making approval without getting some information and stuff. Uh, better than that, I think the company has promised us quarterly updates. So you'll have updates all along, and certainly we can discuss it right. a month before this and uh, as far as the renewal goes, too. But you'll be appraised. Right. Well, fairly I, often on how they're doing yeah. and what they're up to and all of that stuff. Yeah. Well, I, and I expected that. I, I just say, and if if they don't follow through with those, we want to have a, a meeting before the last minute. So, thank you. And then, also, just to clarify to Councilman Orison's point, that's fifty. The 
the total investment is the 20 plus the possible additional five. So we'll be splitting the 20 for 10 and 2,500. Is that accurate? Dan? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the way I understand it. Bill said, yeah, but he, he didn't push his mic I'm so sorry. he didn't hear him. I, I attended the SMU trustees yeah. meeting and uh, Mr. Pick gave a presentation to the trustees and uh, he, although it wasn't on their agenda, they yeah. talked about it and there was consensus across the trustees that they would they would support this by 50%. Thanks. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Okay, before we, uh, item seven under new business, um, I'd like uh, Jim TC to come to the mic and talk a little bit about reviewing the bids uh, with regard to this project. Just a comment or two. Good evening. Yeah, so the DOT took bids uh, for the East, east Side Reconstruction Project. And as part of the funding for that project, the reason the DOT took bids is there's DOT money in it. And then there's also CBDG uh, funds in there from IED. Um, I think there's there's 450,000 DOT swap funds and 600,000 uh, from IED. That 600,000, they both both agencies want to concur with the award of the contract. The DOT has concurred with the award of the contract. Uh, the CBDG folks have not yet concurred. It's, it's a timing thing. Um, so, for your motion, you need to make it contingent upon them uh, concurring with the award. Um, or, I suppose, as an option, you could self-fund it, but. Uh, we expect that we expect to get that uh, anytime, but we don't have it at this point. So. Okay. 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 Thanks, Jim. Okay. So, uh, item A is a resolution awarding the contract for 2023 Eastside Separation PCC pavement grade and replace project and to Halstein. Excavating Inc. for two million nine hundred eighty-nine thousand four hundred forty-one dollars and five cents. Uh, bids were received, as Jim said, by the Iowa DOT, January 18, 2023. Uh, but should we put in that that it's contingent? Would that be the correct way to put that into the motion, Don? Yes, that'd be fine. Okay. Okay. Contingent to their approval. Okay. All right. I'll make a motion that we approve it to Holstein with the stipulation that we get the CBG grant approval. Okay. I'll second. second by Bill. Any discussion? So, yep. okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, uh, Donovan. Okay. So, uh, to get to make myself clear on this, so the grants, there's a $600,000 grant and a $400,000 grant. So there's one million. So the city's coming up with the 1.9, but we didn't have any input on. Is that right? Am I reading that right or hearing it right? Your numbers are correct. Okay. So so yeah, the the DOT. <laughs> Good job, Donovan. So, the DOT it's been a long is, day, Jim. <laughs> DOT is 450, and the CBDG is 600. The city's going to come up with. Uh, 1.8 and SMU is kicking in 500,000. But but we prepared the plans and specs. Okay. So yeah. we had some involvement yeah, with we, the DOT we, saying it's we our design. Pay. They the DOT insists on letting the projects of a certain size and this is above their threshold. So, yeah. Okay. So did we have any input on the all the bidders or anything like that? It was Oh, it's um it, it, Y yes and no. Um, the DOT has more input, and so they they have a higher standard, and they pre-qualify bidders, and so it does shrink the bidding pool. That that's the, kind of the downside of using DOT money on a local project, is it shrinks their bidding pool. Uh, whereas we have, you know, we've got guys qualified to do this work that that aren't on the on, on the bidders list, so. 
some of your smaller guys and subs and things. But uh, uh, in the end, Holstein, you know, they, they've done a lot of work here, and, and, and they do. But uh, well, And I know Holstein has, but I just want to make sure so we're not out that, you know, some of the other local people did have an opportunity if they were able to on the DOT site. I, I'm very familiar with the DOT bidding site, so I just, yeah. before I hear it from somebody else, I want to make sure that we had some input on this. On we, we, and then we actually <clears throat> tried during the letting process. Uh, we appealed to the DO, uh, DOT to um, soften those pre-bidding requirements, and, and they wouldn't budge. Okay. Thank you, so Jim. We did everything we could. Okay. Ron, you had a comment? No, but that was exactly what <laughs> okay. the was going to. So. Okay. Any other comments? Please vote by machine. <clears throat> Nelson, I. Orison, I. Larson, I. Wunchell, I. Hansen, I. Reet, I. Bulk, I. Okay. Item B is a motion to approve fiscal year 2024 West 18th Street City Bridge Funding Offer. I'll second. Motion made by Bill, second by Donovan. Any discussion? Okay. Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. <laughs> Item 8, Department Head Reports, Planning Department. Adam. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. Uh, the J January permit report is out for your viewing pleasure uh, with the low, low temperatures uh, last week and the week before. Inspections and construction has slowed uh, throughout the city. Uh, staff performed the sidewalk snow removal inspections for the January 18th and January 28th uh, snow vents and reported those to Rigby, the removal contractor. Uh, end of January, received propo proposals for the removal of the pole building and um, grain bin on the North Y. Uh, intersection property staff along with city managers currently reviewing and um, we have a complete package for the items to be removed so it's just uh, contingent on the decision and then uh, the commitments are all made to be before my June 2023 deadline. Um, end of January also I attended the uh, floodplain administrator training in Omaha passed the certification. Um, staff hosted the Northwest Iowa Area Inspectors Meeting, had a good turnout from uh, local, ins local uh, municipality inspection teams. Um, this week, um, along with the clerks, uh, planning and zoning training will be attending that at the um, Storm Lake Iowa Extension. Um, other than that, the uh, department is performing inspections as they come in, along with assisting the developmental needs of the community. Any questions? Yeah, I got a quick question. Go ahead. Um, can you explain? I'm getting a few calls on sidewalks that the next many blocks, there is no <laughs> sidewalk, and they got 20 foot of sidewalk on their lot. And so I'm getting calls as like, I can scoop my 20 foot of sidewalk, but it doesn't go anywhere. So sure. who's sidewalk. walking on this? Cause I am getting calls on that now. Sure. Nope. And then we kind of consider those sidewalks to nowhere essentially. And we, uh, staff, we use our best judgment. I know it's been harder this past, these past few snowfalls with the accumulation that's on the ground, but essentially treating it as a sidewalk to nowhere, try to give the property owner grace. Uh, in those situations. Okay. Go ahead. I have one for you, Adam. You bet. <laughs> I also got a call on the sidewalks. Sure. Now, the end of the snow event, you have 24 hours for the residential sidewalks? Correct. Okay. How do you decide when the snow event ends and where is that published? I, we would take, so it would be the cessation of the last, or, you know, last snowfall. Yep. I, where it's posted, I'm not sure, but we, we, we just keep track in office and go from there. Okay. Because I've got a couple phone calls on the 
the it's a little hard. It's a little hard to do per, per portions of town because some south can stay snowing and the north does not. But it's a little difficult to keep track of. Okay. okay. All right. <clears throat> Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thanks, Adam. You bet. Library, Sarah Beth. Good evening. All right, so we're still warm at the library, so we can focus on other <laughs> building projects. We're getting some quotes on um, a few bigger things and working on some small projects, like um, if you remember, I knew tour the outlets on the floor and the magazine section are sticking up on their tripping hazard, so I've, I've got someone trying to figure that out. So um, We also had to have Mr. Drainman out a week or so ago, um, which was a good reminder that I want to get blow dryers instead of paper towels in the bathroom. So um, the library board's meeting this Thursday at 6.30 and we will be uh, connecting with Bonnie, our state library consultant. Um, and she's gonna go over the planning for results process with me and the board. Um, and we'll be doing that. It's like a community survey, that kind of stuff um, in April. Uh, so in our, our strategic plan or our five-year plan is well over five years. So, and this was um, like the big thing keeping us from um, our tier three accreditation this year. So we've made um, arrangements with Bonnie. We've got the um, strategic planning all scheduled. And while the rest of the accreditation application is due at the end of this month and we're working on that, they are going to accept our strategic plan once it's done. Um, as far as programmings, programming goes, we've got the winter reading program for all ages uh, happening through the end of February. Um, this Saturday, there's going to be a kids' craft noon, so it's a stop, um, stop in or come and go between two and four, and they're going to do Valentine crafts. Um, then teens and adults are invited to a program called Unconditional Surrender, a visit from Ulysses S. Grant on February 17th at 2 p.m. Um, and that uh, historian, his name is Pete Grady, and he's going to take us through Grant's um, time as a general in the Civil War and as president and also as a family man. Um, unfortunately, we had to cancel our snowshoeing event, which was postponed from last month already. Um, Not enough snow. <laughs> Not enough snow. <laughs> it was canceled last month because it was raining, and then this month this, it was going to be on that Tuesday, the whatever day that the students were going to have the day off and now they're having it because they're making up snow days. So we'll do something else another time. But And we'll be doing lots of events with Breathe the Naturalist this summer too. Um, and then, of course, Family Fest is March 4th and the library is going to have um, a joint area with the Spencer Reads group. Um, and it's going to be a cozy little reading nook so people can take a break, have a little quiet moment away from the rest of the crowd. Um, and we'll also be giving away books that day. And finally, um, if you need any inspiration for Valentine's Day, um, you can stop in and check out our display, Dude, Where's My Shirt? <laughs> Um, which is a display of romance books where the man on the cover has inexplicably lost or is in the process of losing his shirt. Um, so, you know, might help get you in the mood for Valentine's Day. So. Sorry, Beth. For the Rotary Book Club, we call those romance. Yes, yes. <laughs> Any questions? Any questions? Thank you much. Okay, well, it looks like uh, Chief Kanyon was here, but uh, got called out. So, police. Pat? Good evening. I think John will be back here shortly. It sounded like that was a false alarm that he had to go to. Um, Mark is on vacation this, uh, this week, so I was voluntold to come here today and <laughs> give us uh, give you guys some uh, some numbers here uh, so for the uh, month of January we had uh, looks like 50 total arrests uh, and then uh, calls for service we had uh, 860 total uh, through all the various calls um, I'll keep it short and sweet that's all I have for you all right. <laughs> unless well, you we, guys unless we, you guys have, have question lots of questions <laughs> I'm here to answer them <laughs> to the best of my ability okay are there any questions Okay. Or 
Thank you much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Public Works, Mark. Good evening. Um, obviously, it's been snow removal nonstop as we continue to move on through the process. Uh, all week into the, this week will be snow removal as well, uh, starting to cut down streets and cleaning the extra cul-de-sacs areas and where it's getting uh, uh, thick on the edges or a lot on the edges. So that it just never stops this time of year with the, with the series of snow events we've had. They've also mixed at the street division uh, 300 tons of uh, sanding, uh, icing sand last week in the middle of their projects. And also as we move into uh, this month, uh, the public works staff, Mark and I will be working on some current CIP projects, even though we were talking about into the future CIP. But as you recall earlier, um, Mark had put together, Mark Craig had put together the Spencer by the Numbers with the different maintenance projects and uh, assembled that sheet for everybody. We have, we have a few extra numbers from Public Works that we do every year, and I certainly am not going to go through all of it, just a few brief ones. So uh, in, the, in 2022, uh, sidewalk and driveway grade stake permits, we had 29, there was 55 inspections, uh, 366 excavation permits. The plumbing inspections through the building department were 97, uh, 53 water and sewer inspections, uh, locates, when you call in the Iowa One Call, locate, we, uh, 1,457 were completed. We had 32 emergency locates that are after hours, that's usually a water main or something to that effect. Uh, sewer cleaning, uh, we cleaned uh, 114,826 feet of sewer line last year. Um, televised uh, 12,600 feet, so that's where the camera went. Uh, the mile swept with the street sweepers was 1,760 uh, with 3,923 cubic yards of material removed, all at five yards at a time, basically. So, uh, One of the nice numbers I always like to report about is the uh, RCC collection. Uh, that's the obviously at the uh, Transfer station, the material that we keep out of the landfill, that was uh, 22,871 pounds last year. So kept that out of the landfill with uh, 598 people participating. So that was all we have for the evening, unless we have questions. Any questions for Mark? Thank you. Mark, right. I'm, I'm sorry. Mark. Uh, go ahead. Are you sure? Mark, I just want to say thank you. You and Dan did a good job at responding to the numerous emails and stuff on snow, on not being able to park on the side and the roads closing in and the rough roads. And, and I know we only have the two graders, and it's really hard to get some of that off. But you guys did a very good job of keeping your cool and just keep plugging away at each each Thank event, you. So. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it was kind of a long haul there with uh, some strange weather conditions that complicated things a little, yeah, but I appreciate uh, it. And, and we always welcome the emails from everybody and try to respond. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, Brian. How mm -hmm. are we sitting on our salt sand reserves, and do you anticipate the need to bore more? I mean, uh, we'll probably use more, but we're not having any supply chain issues. So the chloride is... is uh, is um, already in stock for the most part. We buy that in bulk on pallets. And then the salt, whenever we start getting low on salt, believe it or not, the salt comes from Kansas, on um, basically on hopper bottoms, and we'll put in an order, and then uh, we locally source the uh, icing sand. We use a washed sand. It works a little better in the trucks. But uh, no issues, I, I don't... Uh, there's been times in other winter seasons that we've gotten close, so that's a good question. We're like... Oh, geez, we're getting down, and everybody's down on supply. But that doesn't seem to be the case right now. Go ahead. Okay, before you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. So yeah, you're, so you're, cool. you're trying to get out of here. But <laughs> uh, uh, Tracy and Donovan brought up sidewalks. And uh, a few days ago, you and I had talked about sidewalks, but not with regard to snow. Sure. Uh, with regard to sidewalk repair. And... It's. I know we're only in February, but hope springs eternal, and spring will come, and people will be outside and uh, using the sidewalks on a more regular basis, we hope. Absolutely. And there are some sidewalks, obviously, that people need repaired, and 
can you talk a little bit, and I know I should have prepped you, no, <laughs> you know, no. mentioned it before, but uh, can you talk just a little bit about the city's sidewalk repair program that we have in place uh, for citizens who would like to get their uh, sidewalk repaired? Yeah, excellent. Uh, we always want to promote that. We have a sidewalk program that the city of Spencer, thanks to the council, will pay for the concrete if you, be, if you re, need to replace the, the sidewalk at your house. So we have an application online that we encourage people to fill out. And then there's two options with that. At that point, you can hire a contractor, complete the job, bring in the receipt. And we, we have to pre-approve it, obviously, in, in the amount of footage that will be done, and then we'll reimburse you for the concrete portion. Or on the larger jobs, we do offer where it can be assessed, um, which is an assessment process. So then public works staff takes the quotes, uh, contacts with the, the contractor, has the homeowner approve the quotes that have been received, and then uh, we authorize them to move forward with the project. Um, that's a little harder than it used to be because we have a shortage of contractors. So if anybody wants to get in the concrete business or you know somebody that's there, uh, please give us a call so we can get you on the list when we do take quotes because that has been much harder than in the past, receiving quotes. Yeah, and, and it's one of the reasons I brought it up as well is people might want to start making plans to contract, contact a contractor. Yeah, absolutely. And on that form, when we go out, the public works staff, you know, there's some criteria that we use. Uh, we have an inspection process if it meets uh, deficiencies or not. But uh, it's been an excellent program with a lot of a lot of sidewalks have been done over the years. Okay. All right. Any other questions for Mark before he escapes? Before I try okay. to. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Okay. Parks and Recreation, Bob. Good evening, everybody. Uh, so ash tree removal, we're moving down West 5th Street now, so we're still over in that Prospect Pleasant Lane area, but coming down West 5th Street. Uh, so we'll finish up coming down that, and then we'll actually work back Prospect after that. Uh, we probably will see, unless we get a great melt off this week, where trees will get removed, but stumps may not necessarily be taken out at this point in time because we just have too much snow in the way to, to get in there and get the stumps removed. So then Rocky will come back uh, once the snow starts melting off and start removing more stumps again at that point in time. Been working at snow removal on all the trails. We still will have uh, going north from Casey's. That trail will stay closed for now. Uh, there's just too much drifting that goes on there for us to keep it open. And then also going south from Walmart, that portion of the trail will remain closed. Otherwise, everything else should be opened up. Uh, things have, are melting off nicely today and getting nice and cleaned up again. Uh, the kind of the big highlight for us has been the ice skating rink. We've had a lot of attention down there. We've had a lot of people using it. Um, we've had our our own s'mores and blazing pine event out there, which we had a great crowd at. We estimated about 450 people at that. Uh, Brad Smith set up a, another little fundraiser, freezing for a reason, which he had a great turnout at that. Uh, I was down there for about two hours, and in that time frame, there was 35 to 40 people on the ice constantly. So it's just a constant rotation of people coming in. And then we also have, coming up at our shelter, we have the Girl Scouts doing a pasta dinner down there this weekend to raise money for the people that were affected by the fire on Grand Avenue. So nice. lots of cool things happening around the parks. And What are the hours for the pasta? For the four, pasta? Four, yeah. I believe it's four to seven on it. Four to seven? Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Thanks, Bob. <clears throat> okay. Brian Moore, I don't see. Okay, city attorney's report, Don. Well, through January 20th, it was a fairly normal month. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing too unusual or noteworthy, but um, working on various things with other departments as we usually do. As I guess everybody knows, on uh, Sunday, January 22nd, we had a major uh, structural fire on Grand Avenue. Um, uh, if I could, Mayor, have a, maybe a couple minutes of personal privilege. Sure. I'd like to thank a lot of people. It's, it's just amazing uh, the help that shows up when there's a, a tragedy. So I, I'd like to thank, and I do thank, uh, particularly the fire department, the police department, uh, Clay County Emergency Management, 
The Red Cross was there almost immediately. Uh, Spirit Lake Fire Department, uh, Spencer Main Street, Spencer Chamber, Public Works Department was involved. Um, Clay County General Relief uh, is helping with the tenants. Uh, as Bob just mentioned, um, there've, there've been some fundraisers. Uh, the Girl Scout chapter is, is helping. Um, Williams and Company has provided some uh, meeting space. The Dispenser Hospital was on the scene. Um, and, and neighbors like Wheezy's who uh, were feeding the firemen and, and the others that were there uh, fighting that blaze in the cold. Um, I uh, would report that uh, the Thursday after that fire, we, I was back in a fully functioning law office, thanks to our friends, our consulting engineers, who found some room in their lower level. Um, so we were back to work uh, within the week. Um, and we'll, we're in a position now to, to keep working and functioning. But I sure appreciate all the support and help that's uh, been available. Okay. Thanks, Don. <clears throat> and I think that uh, we, we all echo your sentiments uh, with regard to our firefighters and everyone who uh, took part in helping that day. Uh, in the, some really horrific conditions. And uh, we're very fortunate to have the community that we have uh, that pulls together uh, when things like that do happen. So, yeah, your comments are well taken. Okay, human resources, Jessica. Good evening. In the month of January, uh, me, myself, and I in human resources, um, with, I was doing some recruiting. We've got some positions that came open. We've got a full-time 911 dispatcher swing shift position. That one is Tuesday through Saturday, noon to 8 p.m. Uh, full-time administrative assistant, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Full-time firefighter engineer position. That civil service exam will be on the 15th this month with the deadline of um, February 10th at 5.30. So if anyone out there knows anyone interested in being a uh, firefighter for the city of Spencer, we welcome those applications. And I've opened up the seasonal applications for parks, golf, and landfill positions. Um, so if you go to our careers page on our website, uh, we are taking those now. Um, once we have final details from council on um, the wage and some other details, I'll publish that. But for now, I know that a lot of seasonal staff want, are eager, eager, eager to return. So um, those are being accepted. I've also been working through some succession planning for department heads that might be um, thinking about retirement. Um, I'm mostly trying to talk them out of it. Um, <laughs> but also just thinking ahead, you know, in the coming years of, of filling those gaps and then um, as people move up through the organization, filling those roles as well. So working on some leadership development there. Um, our well-being committee is sponsoring a hydration challenge for the month of February. Something we don't think about in the cold weather is staying hydrated. So um, they're sponsoring uh, the top three winners uh, will receive a Yeti water bottle. So that comes out of the well-being committee uh, fund. And Dan, Brian, Weave, and I attended the IGHCP Insurance Conference and Board meeting last week, um, learned about um, the upcoming enrollment um, changes, and everything looks good for the plan there, and I'll be sending out that information in the coming uh, weeks. And then with the help of the Squire Shop downtown, you probably saw my email go out about the apparel shop for the um, city staff and council for Logo Wear. Um, really appreciate them. They host a number of online websites for the community businesses uh, free of charge. So kind of a plug for them because they were really easy to work with and they give a full catalog of apparel and um, it was just really easy, which is my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> Um, finally, we are at 389 days without uh, lost days due to a work injury. Uh, had a brief meeting with the um, work comp carrier rep, and he was just very happy to see the um, length of time we've gone without that lost day count going up. Um, and he expects that our ratio should see those rewards in years to come. We're always kind of a year behind, so um, we're gonna have a little speed bump, but then it should be smooth sailing, I'm pretty sure, right, Brian? <laughs> 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 uh, 
Um, and last month's safety training was on uh, city idling policy and finishing up CPR, AED, and first aid training, and um, some new higher safety orientation. So that's where we're at. Any questions for human resources? Questions, anyone? <clears throat> All right, thank you. Thank you. Engineer's report, Jim. I have nothing in this that's question. Okay. Jim, I have a quick, Bill. Can you, uh, whatever public is listening, do you have any kind of a time frame about how long we're going to see disruption of traffic on the, on the east side of construction this summer? Longer than you would like. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I we we don't, you know, again because it's a DOT lat project, w w in fact we're told not to have any communication with the low bidder until award. And so um, we we haven't had any communication. So so that'll be the first step once we once we get the contractor on board is to try to set up that scheduling. W we did have um, there is some criteria and there are some, some staging requirements and time frames and, and I don't recall what those are. I, Brian set them up and, and but, but we do try to limit it. You know, it's a, it, it's a balancing act. Contractor, you know, if you got, you got to let him in there and get the work done, but they disrupt access and so, but if they have to clean everything up, you know, to let people in, then that takes away time that they could be, you know, doing the improvements. So you try to strike a balance in there that's reasonable. But but we are cognizant that that there's uh, there's people that, you know, it's gonna be an inconvenience for them, that's for sure. Uh, there really is no way to half with it. You know, that's the other option. Um, it just kind of makes two operations, um, which kind of takes three times as long, you know, so, yeah. But when, once we do have, when, when we have a pre-con, then we'll know more. We can report. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Any other questions for Jim? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. City manager's report. Dan? Well, a couple things. Uh, <clears throat> Brian and I started meeting with the department heads to go over their budgets this week. We started today, went over some. We have some set for tomorrow. That's going pretty well. Um, things are looking pretty good so far, um, depending on what the state does. As, as I've said before, they are <clears throat> got several bills out there that could be detrimental to us, but we'll get through it like we always do. Um, one of the other things that come up earlier is um, planning on reaching out to our, our uh, rep and senator with the DOT issue to that's really getting to be a problem to cut out local contractors. So I don't know if they, they can convince the DOT to do anything different with that or not, but it's worth a try. So I'll give them a call in the coming weeks and talk to them about that issue. Okay, uh, I have one question for Dan. Um, and that is, uh, we've had a couple of uh, communiques from the hospital with regard to the 11th street closure do we have an update on that i think uh when i gave the mayor's update in january it was april 1st for 11th street are we at april 1st or march 1st you know? um i don't know we were supposed to set up a, a meeting and okay. i'll get that done this week to to meet with them uh to to go over that they wanted to okay. do that a little bit ahead of time so i'll update okay. you once i get that information okay any other questions for dan okay okay under the mayor's report um i would i was going to give an update a little bit on the fire in downtown spencer uh but i concur with what everything that uh don had to say about that big thanks to everybody with regard to that uh, just a couple of things, not necessarily on a local level, but uh, February is Black History Month, and uh, Black History Month was established in 1976 uh, during the nation's bicentennial by President Ford. And President Ford thought that the accomplishments of black Americans uh, were not being, um, uh, that they were, they were being neglected. And so he instituted uh, Black History Month, and we've been celebrating Black History Month 
to shine a light on uh, the accomplishments of African Americans uh, since then. So uh, take that into account this month, uh, as well as the Valentine's Sarah Beth was talking about as well. Uh, secondly, to that end, with regard to African Americans, and more on a local level, Iowa, on February 1st, celebrated the first George Washington Carver Day. Um, the inaugural event was to honor Iowa State's first black student and first black professor, uh, certainly one of the great scientific minds of the early 20th century. Uh, that event was held in Ames. Uh, it was hosted by former Ambassador Kenneth Quinn and former Governor Terry Branstead. So uh, a very great event and uh, a good honor for a great American as well. And that's all I have at this time. So we'll go to item 12, council and committee reports. I'll just have a few uh, finance committee meetings on the 9th and 10th at 8.30 a.m. Um, there's a Northwest Iowa League of Cities meeting on the 16th at 5.30 in Denison and our city council meeting, regular city council meeting on the 20th. And we are meeting in closed session tonight after this meeting for uh, one item. Okay. Item 13, I'd entertain a motion to approve the bills and claims. So moved. Motion made by Bill. Second. Second by Brian. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay, motion carries. Item 14. Other business opportunity to address the council. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, I assume you're a reader of the Des Moines Register because you and I have talked about it several yes. times. Um, I wonder if you or Brian or Dan or Brian have any update. I see where the state auditor, uh, the ICAP insurance fund is that apparently how they're spending money is going to the going to the state supreme court. Uh, do you see that affecting us in any way? I didn't, I didn't know about I didn't it. I, read it. it. I just read it in a paper on Saturday or Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, yeah. yeah I have not seen that article, so I don't know exactly what was going on. Okay. The case that's that's going up really is concerns the state auditor's authority yeah. over it. So it, that itself won't have a, a direct effect on it. Uh, if, they, if the court upholds the auditor's authority, um, then he'll be investigating, and down the road, that might have an that impact. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Anything else? Anyone else uh, like to come and make a presentation before the council? If not, we'll go to item 15, and I would entertain a motion to go into closed session pursuant to section 21.5J of the Iowa Code regarding purchase or sale of particular real estate. We got that, Tom? Second. Second by Lauren. Any discussion? Uh, Don, have you had an opportunity to review and you, do you agree that this meets the threshold for a closed session? Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay, we will be in closed session as soon as uh, we get everyone cleared out of the chamber.